Hey guys, so today we're gonna learn the unit circle. So we kind of talked about this a little bit last week where we filled in what's called the quadrantals, the zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And because this is on the coordinate plane, here's the origin. We talked about the radius is one, so that's how we got these points. But now we're gonna go back and fill in the rest. So let's talk about the unit circle a little bit. So again, we said that it's called the unit circle because the radius is one and the center is at the origin. So if we have our circle here, we can have a point anywhere along this circle. So if I have a point, here's the X value and here's the Y value of that point. Well, we're gonna use these different angles that create these points to figure out the sine, cosine, and tangent of them. So the way this works is they create this angle that's opened up here, we'll call this theta, and to determine sine, cosine, and tangent, they make this into a right triangle. So here is the x distance, here's the y distance, so at right x up y to get this point. Now, because this is a unit circle again, here is the radius of this circle, well, we said the radius is one. So the length of this line is one. So if I'm gonna find the sine of theta, here's theta, opposite over hypotenuse, so y over one is just y. For cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, x over one is just x. For tangent, opposite over adjacent, y over x. This here is the main thing you need to have memorized when using the unit circle. That sine is the y value, cosine is the x value, and tangent is the y value over the x value. I don't really know why this is here. Okay, so say you have a point five, three. This will not be the unit circle. We're just gonna practice doing sine, cosine, tangent. So if they went right five and up three, say they're about here, This is what the triangle would look like. Theta is always by the origin. So right five up three. And if I need the hypotenuse, I can just do Pythagorean theorem. Five squared plus three squared is 34. Square root of 34 cannot be simplified. So we'll just leave it as the square root of 34. So in order to do sine, cosine, tangent, we'll do sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so three over root 34. We gotta rationalize the denominator, so multiply the top and the bottom by root 34. Three over 34 cannot be simplified, so this is my answer. Let's do cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So five over root 34. Same situation, we need to rationalize. Five root 34 over 34, and there's cosine. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So three over five, don't need to simplify there. Cool, so that's how you'll use those points. Similarly, if you have a negative number, so we're gonna go left five, down three. So that's about here. And this will be a little bit easier because we already have these numbers that we use. So I know that this is root 34. The only difference, anywhere we used a five, it's gonna be negative. So if I'm gonna find the sine of theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, Sine is the same. It's still opposite over hypotenuse, three over root 34, which we rationalized to three root 34 over 34. The only difference now with cosine is it's a negative five. So my answer from the top here is now gonna be negative five root 34 over 34. And tangent does have the five, so we'll say negative three fifths. Yay!
Okay, so now looking specifically on the unit circle, we did these what's called quadrantal angles last week where we figured out where 0, 180, 270, 90, all of that is. Let's review it here. So if you have your unit circle, remember all these, what are they called? Radiuses, radii, are what? So here's 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, which is what we're going to look at here. And the coordinates, if this is the origin, 0, 0, to the right would be 1, 0. Up is 0, 1. Left, negative 1, 0. Down, 0, negative 1. So we're going to utilize the fact that we know sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x to determine sine, cosine, tangent for each of these angles. So let's write it up here. Sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x. Okay, so if I'm going to go to the zero degrees, that's over here. Sine is y. So sine is zero. Cosine is x, so cosine is one. Tangent is y over x. Zero over one is just zero. Yay! Okay, 90 degrees. Sine is y, so one. Cosine is x. Tangent is y over x. Anything over zero is undefined. Let's go to 180. Sine is y. Cosine is x. Tangent is y over x. 270. Sine is y. Cosine is x. Tangent is y over x. That's over 0, so we have undefined. Okay, so again, those are the angles that we already did here. Let's look at the other special right triangles that we talked about the very first day of this unit. So here's why we did those because those are the three different angles that are gonna be in our first quadrant here. The 30, the 60, 90, and then the 45. So for 45, remember the radius is always gonna be one. Our rules for 45, 45, 90 were x, x, x root two. Well, I'm given that x root two is one. So we need to figure out what x is to get the other sides. So to solve for x, I'm gonna divide by root two. Well, I can't have a square root in my denominator, so I'm gonna rationalize by multiplying the top and the bottom by root two. So x is root two over two. So that is what's gonna go here and here. Root two over two, root two over two. So if I need to figure out this point, we went right root 2 over 2 and up root 2 over 2. So that is the x and y value. So 45 degrees is pi over 4. That's the radian. So using this point, the cosine is the x value. Sine is the y value. Tangent is y over x. You might stress out, but think about it. If you divide something by itself, the answer is always just one. Yay! So that's 45. Let's do the 30. The rules for 30, 60, 90. If this is our 30 degree angle, we have x, 2x, and x root 3. Well, remember the radius is 1, so we're given that 2x equals 1, which makes x 1 half. So this short side is 1 half. So if x is 1 half, 1 half times root 3 is just root 3 over 2. So let's figure out this coordinate here. We went right, root 3 over 2, and up 1 half. So now solving for sine, cosine, tangent. Cosine is the x value. Sine is the y value. And for tangent, we're going to divide these now. So if I'm dividing y divided by x, that's 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Remember when you divide fractions, that's the same thing as 1 half times 2 over root 3.
the twos cancel, you're left with one over root three, which we've rationalized before as root three over three. Okay, last one is 60. Same concept here, except these changed. This is now x root three and this is x, but our two x is still one, which still makes x one half. So this time, one half is at the bottom and root three over two is the vertical distance. So my coordinate here is one half root three over two. So everything basically switches. Now your x value, the cosine is one half, the sine is root three over two, and when you divide, you're doing root three over two divided by one half. Dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So the twos just cancel, you're left with root three. Okay. Now that we've looked at the special right triangles, we're gonna put these on our actual unit circle. So let's go to our unit circle. So in this first quadrant, we have 30 degrees, we have 45 degrees, and we have 60 degrees. Okay, and their radians, if you multiply by pi over 180, 30, turns into pi over six. I'm gonna use these bars as like the fraction. 45 is pi over four, and 60 is pi over three. Okay, so going back to what we just learned, if I'm gonna do the point at 30 degrees, that's right here, root three over two, one half. So root three over two, one half, flip back over and look at 45. That was root two over two, root two over two. And then the pi over three was one half, root three over three. And remember, we determined all of these because of the special right triangle rules and knowing that the radius was one. Hang on, somebody has a question on the test. Pause, Think, talk amongst yourselves. Sorry. I don't understand this question. Okay, so now every quadrant from here is a reference angle of quadrant one. So remember reference angle is how far away it is from the x-axis. So if I'm gonna look at 30 degrees in quadrant two, this line is 30 degrees from the x-axis. In quadrant three, this line is 30 degrees from the x-axis. And in quadrant four, this line is 30 degrees from the x-axis. I'll do the same thing with 45. So here's 45. This is 45 reference angle. This is a 45 reference angle. And this is a 45 reference angle. And same thing for 60. This is going to be useful because their coordinates should be similar. So if you're doing 30 degrees and looking at its reference angle, let me go ahead and fill in quadrant two for you. So there's 90, 60, um, what is it, 110, 120, 135, 150. Okay, and I'll let you figure out their radians. But so 30 degrees matches this. Okay, so 
this side will match this coordinate, except in going right and up, you're going left and up. So the only thing that changes is your x value is negative. So negative root three over two, one half, because you went left in your x direction and then up. So this coordinate to match 45, again, the x value would be negative. The y value would stay positive. Same thing here. X value is negative. Y value is positive. Cool. Okay. So you are going to be responsible to fill out the rest. I do want to see your different colors, notifying that each reference angle matches who. And let's talk about it real quick. In this quadrant, you're going left and down. So both X and Y values should be negative. In fourth quadrant, you're going right and down. So X is positive, Y is negative. I need you to fill in all the radians, all the degrees, all the coordinates. That's all I need to see when you submit this in Schoology. Okay, bye!